What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now, in today's tutorial, we'll be learning how to make this really cool title template for Premiere Pro via the Essential Graphics panel inside of After Effects. Yeah, so, there's a few steps, but I promise it's really easy. So let's jump over to Premiere Pro and see what we're making. So you can see here that it just goes out, top title, bottom text, and goes away. What's really cool about this though is we can click on it and we can edit it in the Essential Graphics panel inside of Premiere Pro. So hit Window, Essential Graphics, there you go. And it's really, really easy to do. I made it in After Effects and exported it for Premiere Pro. But once we've made it, it's done. So let's jump over to After Effects and make some really simple animation and go from there. Now, if you don't want to make the animation yourself, feel free to download the project file down in the description. And once you've downloaded that, you can skip to the Essential Graphics portion of this tutorial and follow along from there. Sweet. So now that we're in After Effects, you can see this is my original animation that I made before. But I want to start from scratch to make something really simple, really quick. So let's do it. So first off, we're going to right click inside of After Effects' project panel right here. Right click, new composition. And then a dialog box pops open. And we'll call this Big Title 2. Uh, width, height, 1920 by 1080 for an HD composition. Frame rate, we'll leave it at 60 frames per second. And the duration, Let's make it five seconds, so zero five, not 58, zero five. And hit okay. Now, we wanna make a bar that scales out like before. So at the top of After Effects, we're gonna grab a little square tool right here, and we're gonna drag out a bar. Doesn't really matter the size at this moment, it'll change later. Just like that looks good to me. Now, uh, currently the fill is set to red, we can leave it like that and we'll go from here. So, so once your shape layer is here, we're gonna drop down this little arrow, drop down on contents, and then drop down on rectangle, and then drop down on rectangle path. Now, let's unclick this little chain link right here to change the scale and size of this rectangle. Uh, we'll make it a lot thinner with the Y axis and leave it right there. And then we'll go down in our timeline, right around, I don't know, 45 frames. We'll keyframe the position with the stopwatch right here, go back in time, and take the X and keyframe it down to zero. Now that scales up just like so, maybe a little quicker. We'll go down in our timeline once again. We'll keyframe the size one more time with this little keyframe option right here. We'll go down in our timeline one more time and we'll take the X down to zero once again. So this is the in and out transition of the actual bar that we see. Super simple and super easy. That is done. So now we're gonna make text that goes above the line. So now we're gonna grab our type tool or click T on our keyboard. So click the type tool and then click right here and we're gonna type big title. And I'm using a font called Gibson. Um, I don't know if you have that or not, but it doesn't matter. So we're gonna take this and change the font size, I don't know, 500, too big, uh, 300. That's pretty good. Um, click this, click V on our keyboard and move it over kind of center it up. We'll go to our align tool and we'll center it on our, our display right here. Then we'll go to our paragraph right here in After Effects and make sure the text is centered because it's over here when you retype it inside of Premiere Pro, it's gonna retype weird. So make sure your text is centered. So when we retype it, it always types out from the center. So I might scale it or make it a little smaller. Let's do 250 instead to Perfect. Um, now, what we're gonna do is drag it down to right about here, and and you know what? Let's call it just big, all caps, big title. Capitals should always be all caps because there's no G's that go under the line. That's what we want. So. We'll hit uh, P on our keyboard. We'll keyframe the position. So P opens up position, we'll keyframe it. Go back in time and we'll move it down the timeline or down below the little plus for our title and action safe. So you turn your title and action safe on below the plus or below the line in this case. Goes up and we want it to start a little bit after the line. So we'll click U on our keyboard by, we'll highlight the shape layer one and then click U on our keyboard to see the keyframes. We want big title to actually show up a little bit after that shape. So keyframes go up just like so maybe right after it's finished Oop, just like that go down on our timeline we'll keyframe position one more time go down on our timeline and we'll go down back to this right here so it's in and out just like so 
Whoop. Just like that. And down. All right, so now what we're gonna do is make the title look like it's coming out from below the line or behind the line in a weird way. So what we'll do is go around down the middle of our timeline. We'll grab the shape tool one more time and we will drag a giant shape that is bigger than the top all the way down to the red line, just like so. You can change the color of this shape just to make it a little easier seen on the display. That's about it. Now what we'll do is actually take the shape layer two and big title and move it below shape layer one. Then we'll take big title and we'll take the track mat option and click down on none and change it to alpha mat shape layer two. Now if you don't see track mat, don't worry. We're gonna right click inside of here under right next to source name. It's just in the gray bar area and click columns and then go to modes. So right click columns modes turns on your track mat. Now change big titles track mat to alpha mat shape layer two, which turns shape layer two off and also says big title only show when you're under shape layer two. So when it's below this shape, it'll show. When it's not below the shape, it won't show. So it looks like it's being revealed from the line, but it's really not. Now, we're gonna grab big title and we're gonna grab shape layer one and we're gonna click U on our keyboard to show all the keyframes. And we're gonna highlight all these keyframes. We're gonna right click and keyframe assistant and easy ease, which is gonna change the dynamicness of our keyframes. So now, it looks a little smoother when they fade and fade in and fade out instead of that A to B motion. But what we can do even more is highlight all the keyframes, make them all blue, click our graph editor right here. If you see this, you don't want this, you wanna change the little option, choose graph type and options down below, and then hit edit speed graph, which opens up the speed graph. Now we can highlight all these keyframes and move this over, grab this anchor point and move this over, which makes the in, in and out a little more dynamic. Just like so, maybe you slow it down just a little bit on the end. Just like that, do the same thing back here. Move it over, move it over, and whoop, just like that, sweet. All right, I might wanna make this end a little bit before five. Cool, now we have our, essentially our big title line text thing. Looks great to me. Now we need to make a color controller, also slider control inside of the After Effects build to make the essential graphics template work perfectly inside of Premiere Pro. So what we're gonna do is inside of our layer panel, we're gonna right click new adjustment layer. This might be an extra step in reality, but it works for me. So we're gonna call this uh, control. So we're gonna go to window and then effect controls so we can show the control effect controls. Highlight control, we're gonna right click inside of effect controls when it's shown in the window while we're highlighting control. Right click and do expression control and do color control, one more. Color control and then one more and slider control. The slider will be the scale or the how far the line goes out. It's a really cool little expression, works all the time. So first off, we're gonna take our shape layer one, we're gonna drop down on it uh, we're gonna go find where the color is inside a rectangle, which is pretty cool to find. And you get a fill. Oh, there's the fill right there. Um, we'll click Control one more time. We'll change this color to, I don't know, it doesn't matter. We'll change it to turquoise or something. Um, then click Alt or Command on your keyboard while highlighting the little stopwatch next to color. Click it, opens up your expressions, opens up this little squiggly, Highlight control one more time and drag this squiggly all the way to this one. It'll turn it blue. Turned it blue, but up here inside of your control, when you click control, you can actually change the colors of this. Really cool. Now for big title, we wanna be able to change the color of the text really easily and simply. Now instead of diving into big title to change it, we can do an effect to change it really quickly too. So we're gonna do effects and presets inside of After Effects, window effects and presets if you can't find it. And then we're gonna type fill. Drag and drop this fill onto the big title, which is a new effect that changes the color. Drop down on effects, drop down on big title, drop down on effects, drop down on fill, and then do the same thing. Alt or command click the little stopwatch for the red. Opens up the uh, effects or the expression controls with a little squiggly. Click on control one more time, and we will drag this to the red second color, which is our color control for the text. 
Now you can imagine if you had more text in this template, you just add more controls to add more colors. So we can change the color of the text to purple for all we care. And now we need to make a cool one to make the slider work. So we're gonna drop down on shape layer one, which is our first bar, um, our little bar that opens up. And we're gonna drop down on, let's do the scale, this'll work. So the scale is this, it'll make it bigger, small, bigger, small. But we don't want the it to scale up vertically where it's getting big like this. Our scale doesn't work like that. Um, we'll unclick the chain link and now we can scale it from left to right just like this. Cool. So, same as before, um, use Alt or Command click the scale to open up the stopwatch option, which is our little squiggly. And then we're going to click on Control and we're going to drag the squiggly to the slider, which will create the left and right motion. But we have a problem. It's scaling it up like 359% on the X and Y, making it vertically bigger. We want it only to widen, not to get taller. So we need to change something inside of this little uh, expression to make this happen. Now, I did this the first time and I had no clue how to do this, so I just kind of looked at the expression to figure out what this might mean. So, temp equal this comp layer control affects slider control slider. So, this comp layer's effect, which is here, um, equals what the slider is over here. So temp and temp. Now temp and temp kind of eerily looks like the numbers. It's like number comma number, number comma number. Okay, so maybe if we take the this one, we want it to stay at 100% and just change it to 100 inside of here, it'll always stay 100. And this will be the temp, which is this, which will equal our slider up here. So let's try it. Click. And it worked. So if you keep the 100 on the right side of this temp, or this little bracketed layer right here, it'll always be 100%. And the slider will always control the X in this case, which is what we want. Now you can go ahead and do the same thing to add the lower text if you want. Just do another title, do another shape on top of it, do the alpha mat, do the keyframes, boom, done. But we're gonna stick for this just to save time. So now we have this, let's change this back to, I don't know, 200. So the scale at 200, it's, uh, it's right there. So, you know, whatever size you decide to make this with the scale control, it'll always, you know, be the exact size you need, just like that, cool. Now, what we're gonna do is create the essential graphics controllers for the template inside of Premiere. So go to Window, inside of After Effects, and then Essential Graphics. Opens up a new thing. Um, this is my old one. This is gonna be a new one. So let's, uh, when Essential Graphics opens up, you're gonna find your master, which is our Big Title 2, which is a new composition that we created. We'll call this Big Title 2. This is what, this is what will show up inside of Premiere. And we were gonna go to click Solo Supported Properties. So boom, it opens up all these properties inside of After Effects, inside of our layer panel that we can actually drag and drop into the Essential Graphics. So what we're gonna do, is go up to our control. They're all there now, which is super simple instead of us having to scroll. And we're gonna grab this color, drop it into here, grab this color, <laughs> grab this color, drop it into here, grab this slider, drop it into here. And then also we want the big title to be able to change. So we'll scroll down to big title, find our text, find our text, big title. And then we'll drag source text up to here, which is the source text. We can retype it right there. So uh, we'll type top title or top text. Um, we'll change the color to, or bar color, um, text color, and boom. Now, this is currently set to 96 for the range. It won't get any bigger than 100. We want it to possibly get bigger in case uh, you type your text longer or wider in this case. So what we're gonna do is click edit range and opens up a new little value and just set a really high value. It doesn't really matter. I'll do 5,000, um, well, excuse me. Uh, value 2 right here, 5,000. And our current value, we can just set it at, like, I don't know. What is it currently? 100. Um, click OK. This allows us to actually change it all the way up to 5,000, which is probably way too big. Let's do 500%. And value 100. It's not pixels, it's percentage. So it can get mega big. 
So edit your range to be the perfect value, 300. Still too big. But hey, it works. This is essentially ready, besides, you know, setting your poster frame, which is just a little frame thumbnail right here in Essential Graphics that shows you what it is. So let's do set poster frame, which will be the current frame inside of our, you know, After Effects thingy. Set poster frame, and boom, you have big title. Now, one thing I might want to change is this positioning of this, but that's about it. I'm pretty good. Um, now we're going to save this entire project and open it up inside of Premiere Pro. So export motion graphics template, click it. Um, this project needs to be saved, no big deal. And from there, opens up the export as motion graphics template inside of After Effects. Warn me if this motion graphics template uses fonts that are not available in Typekit. Sure, okay. Uh, warn me, that's whatever, it's fine. Um, make sure it's saved to Essential Graphics. This will open up right inside of Premiere Pro for you. Click OK. Now, open up Premiere Pro. Uh, back in Premiere Pro, no problem. Here's my original big title text that you may have downloaded by now. Um, we're going to click uh, Essential Graphics inside of Premiere Pro. So go to Window. So go to Window and then Essential Graphics. And opens up Essential Graphics for us. We'll go to Browse. And we should see a new graphics in here. Big Title 2. Right there inside of Browse. Uh, let's drag it into here like a layer, like any other thing. And then hover over it and boom, we have Big Title. Click it. Um, in Essential Graphics, you can actually click Edit while you're over it, and here's all your parameters. You can change it, move it around, just like any other effects. When the effect controls inside of Premiere, you can move it on screen, no problem at all. And you have your new, completely custom text title. You can do this for lower thirds, you can do this for all kinds of stuff inside of Premiere Pro, which is super, super cool. They render really nice too, which is surprisingly cool. So, that is how you create a quick and easy text template for Premiere Pro via Essential Graphics, via After Effects. I know it's a little more complicated than it seems. It's actually really easy, but I wanted to cover a lot of different topics to help you become a better editor. So, as always, I'm Max. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of the channel. If you're new, feel free to like this video and subscribe. Other than that, I guess I'll just catch you guys in the next video. Peace.